Hi there, today I'm repairing a battery from an EMC storage controller. Um, well, repair, it needs new battery cells and I show you how I solder them in and out because, well, it's a little bit tricky. And now it's time to fire up the soldering stations. For this job we need all the stations we have at full power because, well, you will see. Here are my magnetic PCB holders. They are very good for this job here because I need to suspend the board a little bit in the air to make the batteries drop down when I desolder them as you will see in a couple of minutes. I start with pushing this sharp tool between the battery and the PCB that creates a little bit of tension on the solder joint and when I heat it up I will see when the pin starts to move. First I apply some fresh solder that makes everything a little bit easier, makes the thermal contact between the soldering iron and the PCB a little bit easier. Sometimes you hear a little click when it breaks free. The glue they used here to attach the batteries to the PCB is some sort of silicon, but it's not an elastic silicon, it's a relatively brittle and hard silicon, so if we force the battery down a little bit with our tool, um, it will break quite easily and can be removed later. Here you can see why I put a plastic sheet on the steel plate because if the battery drops down and rolls over it could short and uh, well these batteries are capable of more than 100 amps so that's probably a bad thing. And as you already have seen, I'm using two soldering irons here, simply because the soldering pad here is relatively big. There is also a big chunk of uh, metal from the battery that needs to uh, heat up and uh, it's the only way to get enough heat into the solder to melt it through to the other side. We also have a two-sided PCB that makes the job even a little bit more difficult, so that's why I'm using two irons and that works pretty well. This side of the battery pack is extra difficult because first we are between all these electronic components, so we have to be careful not to damage any of them. And then you can see there are these big MOSFET chips on the left side and on the other side of the PCB is a big heatsink that draws away all the heat we are putting in. So that takes a little bit longer until 
this uh, side of the battery comes free, but at the end it works too. Then the next step is to clear out all these uh, PCB holes here for the batteries. That's also a little bit tricky because the desoldering iron alone doesn't have enough heat capacity to melt everything. So I'm using the big tip here with the soldering iron and then remove the solder on the left and on the right side and in the center. And that works pretty well. Sometimes a little bit of the solder stocks in this uh, gap here and the easiest way is to fill it completely again and start over from the beginning and you will see that works pretty well. <laughs> It's time to talk a little bit about the batteries. So we have this battery type is a 26650 shape. It's 26 millimeters by 65. And uh, the interesting part here, it has a continuous current of over 50 amps and a maximum current of 120 amps for 10 seconds. And that's pretty much for a battery of this size. Uh, it has about two and a half amp hours, uh, just like the 18650 batteries, but the discharge current here is much bigger. As you can see, if you touch it with some solder wire, it melts within a fraction of a second. But is it really true? Can we draw up to 100 or more amps from these batteries? Let's take our electronic load from 1978 and, well, let's check it. We start in the 10 amps range, so that shouldn't be a problem. Just connect the, the plus and the minus correctly. Here on the left meter we have the voltage, it's about three and a half volts. Disconnect, connect, yes, okay. And here we have the amps, we are on the 10 amp range for the first test. So the whole instrument, whole travel here is 10 amps, not 100, it's 10. And as you can see, no problems. Let's go to the 50 amp range, so the whole meter is now 50 amps. It's the scale on the top and we can go there without a problem. 50 amps, that's the nominal discharge current maximum. And now we go to the 100 amp range and I also have my thermal camera here. So we are almost at 100 amps, maybe 95 and you see how the battery heats up already has 40 degrees and it gets yellow and that's the reason why you shouldn't do that for longer than 10 seconds because well batteries don't like to be hot it's time to put the new batteries in and you will see i will also use two soldering irons for that well for the same reason we need more heat to get the solder through the board to the other side so that everything is connected properly.
I don't have that special kind of silicon glue, so I'm using normal hot glue. The only thing that is not normal is that my hot glue is green. That's uh, remaining uh, from the build of the Christmas tree where I needed green hot glue. So I have a rest and I will use that up. Before soldering, I need to trim these legs here a little bit. Uh, that's a little bit dangerous because the batteries, well, they are not fully charged, but they still have some charge in it. So I have power here on these uh, contacts. They are all in series, so 8 times 3 point something volt. It's more than 24 volts at the end. So if I touch anything with my soldering iron or my solder wire here, I will create a short and probably damage something. So that's something you have to keep in mind when working with batteries. So they are always on the voltage. Here comes the double iron trick again. I have one iron with the large tip and well I only have one large tip so I took the second largest tip for the second iron and well it works pretty well. It's time to clean the soldering joints with isopropyl alcohol. Uh, don't take too much because it will also dissolve the hot glue uh, on the other side but eventually when it uh, evaporates it will get solid again but well you never know and here you can see why we need this extra protection because these EST contacts here, they could theoretically push down and pierce through the insulation of the battery. So we need some extra protection and insulation here. Okay folks, that's it. Thanks for watching.